Once a cancer is spread, we often tell owners one to two to three months, and I've had patients live six to eight months. I've had some live over a year. I've had some live over two years, and I've had some live three and four years. Today's vlog is about metastatic lung cancer and metronomic chemotherapy. And if you were searching for different videos, you may have come across two videos of when we're talking about lung cancer. So a recent video that I just did was about primary lung cancer in dogs, which is very uncommon in dogs. And guys, I've actually seen a lot of appointments recently. And when, you know, in my appointment book, which is actually a computer nowadays, lung cancer, lung cancer, lung cancer is listed as the reason that the pets are coming in. But usually those patients have metastatic lung cancer because, as I was saying, that is way more common than primary lung cancer. If you're looking for information about primary lung cancer, we'll put the link below because, like I said, I just did a recent video about that. So there is information here for you. And again, I'll put link below. But today's video is about metastatic cancer to the lungs and how I typically recommend treating it with something called metronomic chemotherapy. So let's break it down. Let's talk about what metronomic chemotherapy is, what are the chemotherapy drugs that we typically use, and how we will often see responses. So what is metronomic chemotherapy? So you will often hear that term or low dose oral chemotherapy, which explains what it is. Remember the metronome, which is what keeps the beat. Um, if you, you know, ever took piano lessons when you were a little kid, I did. So again, it's meant to be pulse low dose oral chemotherapy. So that's where the, the phrase metronomic comes from. So it's uninterrupted administration of oral chemotherapy done at home by the pet owner. It's usually associated with less toxicity, but that can vary from pet to pet depending on which drugs that we're using and classically less expense, but again, depending on which drugs we're using and some of the drugs that we use in the metronomic chemotherapy protocols have changed in the recent years. So not always less expensive, but that is the idea. So it's oral, so ease of administration. You don't have to bring your pet in to, you know, a specialty clinic. Uh, the hospital doesn't have to have all of the, you know, chemotherapy hood and gowns and specialty trained nurses to administer chemotherapy. So that is helpful. One of the key differences is there's no breaks in treatment. So if your pet is going in for lymphoma treatment, it's weekly, or bone cancer, osteosarcoma treatment, they're getting chemo either weekly, every two weeks, every three weeks. This is, there's no breaks between treatments. So we're giving it at lower doses, but at very frequent, regular intervals, which is usually daily or every other day as we'll go through. So that is sort of the gist of what metronomic chemotherapy is. Now let's talk about how it's different than the other chemotherapy, what I'm gonna call classic chemotherapy, which is that maximum tolerated dose chemotherapy. And when I think about that, you know, it's most of the other chemotherapy protocols that I talk about in most of the videos. So again, like osteosarcoma, where your dog is going in every three weeks, or lymphoma, um, where we're giving high doses of chemo. It doesn't have to be injectable. It can also be oral as well, like low mustine and things like that. So classic chemotherapy is maximum tolerated dose, where we're giving the dog or cat maximum tolerated doses. And again, this is that low dose oral chemotherapy. When we're giving maximum tolerated dose chemotherapy, the goal is to directly kill those cancer cells. So, you know, sort of zap kill the cancer cells. It's a little bit more technical than that and different chemotherapy drugs have different mechanisms of action. But the reason that we space the chemotherapy treatments out either weekly, every two weeks, every three weeks is to give the normal tissues time to recover like the gastrointestinal tract, the white blood cells, which is usually what we call the dose limiting toxicity. During that time, those tumor cells repopulate, they repair the damage that the chemotherapy has caused and allows those cancer cells to grow back. But again, the goal of maximum tolerated dose chemotherapy, like doxorubicin, vincristine, lomustine, and things like that is direct tumor kill. With metronomic chemotherapy, with that low dose pulse chemotherapy, we are not directly killing the cancer cells. 
we are actually targeting the blood vessels. So the endothelial cells that line the actual tumor blood vessels. And in, the goal is often that the tumor will stay the same size. I'm very happy, more happy when it shrinks or completely goes away, but stable disease is often a success. As long as the pet is tolerating the protocol well and you know they're having a good quality of life. So it's really different than how we think about like lymphoma where we want those patients to go into a complete remission. And it's really changed the way that I've been, thought about treating patients over the last 10 plus years that I've been using metronomic key chemotherapy. And we'll talk about, you know, which are the cases that are ideal, but dogs that, and, and cats that come to see me with metastatic cancer that has spread to the lungs, for example, is really to me an ideal case where I'm often using metronomic chemotherapy. There are some other situations as well, like soft tissue sarcomas that have been incompletely removed and radiation is not an option for other reasons, that would be another place for some of the metronomic chemotherapy protocols. And that's why you'll hear it called anti-angiogenic, which is a fancy doctor word for targeting the blood vessels. For the purpose of this video, I think that's a good comparison in that you know maximum tolerated dose chemo directly kills the cancer cells, and this is targeted to cut off the blood supply. So the way that I often describe it is that we're trying to starve the cancer cells by cutting off their blood supply. So they're not gonna get the nutrients, the blood sugar, the glucose that they need to grow. And sometimes these tumors will regress over time and sometimes they will just stabilize and we can maintain a, the patient's quality of life and hopefully prolong how long the patient is with us with that great quality of life. Immunology was not my strong point in vet school at all, but there are some cool immune responses that some of these drugs, specifically cyclophosphamide and then palladium cyclophosphamide together can cause. And so they um, can change the T regulatory cells and that can help the host, which is the dog or the cat that's on these chemotherapy protocols fight the cancer. So there is also some cool immune responses Again, I'm not going to dive too deep into that. If you're a veterinarian or a veterinary professional, I do talk about that in my metronomic chemotherapy lecture. So pretty cool stuff that's actually been studied in the last couple of years of these protocols have been used. Cyclophosphamide does downregulate the T regulatory cells and that allows the patient, the host, to identify these cancer cells and then hopefully destroy the cancer cells. And then we have seen when you use cyclophosphamide and palladia together, there's a cool synergistic effect. So even though I don't like the immune system, I like when it helps our patients. So uh, again, I hope that was a good enough explanation for you. Let's move on to the next thing because immunology, not my favorite. You know, I'm honest. Okay, let's go on. And the last major difference with metronomic chemotherapy, in addition to not having a major direct effect on the cancer cells, like I said, we're cutting off their blood supply, it tends not to affect the skin cells, um, and it also tends not to really affect the neutrophils, the white blood cells. So in general, we, we tend not to see drastic low white blood cell counts the way that we do with some of the other chemotherapy, the maximum tolerated dose. We still do watch the white blood cells, sometimes with chronic usage, and I have had some of these patients uh, successfully on these protocols for six months to four plus years. We will have to give them a little bit of break if we see progressive low white blood cell counts, just to kind of give the bone marrow some time to recover. But in general, we don't see a lot of side effects to the cells that I just mentioned. So that really summarizes how metronomic chemotherapy is different than classic conventional chemotherapy. The other thing that I think is really important to know is that it's slow acting what I find when you put patients on these protocols is it's not going to melt tumors away in the lungs or in the abdomen if they have metastatic disease there. It takes time because you're, again, starving them by cutting off the blood supply. So often I will not do follow-up imaging, whether it's chest x-ray or ultrasound, for th two to three months after starting the protocol and usually space it out there. But I will see the patients back in the beginning every two weeks, but once they're on their maintenance dose, usually every four weeks and then 
eventually every six weeks, but it does require consistent, you know, visits with your oncologist, with your veterinarian to monitor. So you're not just going to go home with three months worth of medication, at least under my direction, and not see me because it requires close monitoring of weight and things like that. So that's really the palladia-based protocol. Some of the other less intense metronomic protocols that are, if you're just on like cyclophosphamide and a non-steroidal, you may, I may be doing every six weeks. So the point of this video is not to give you the exact protocol that I do, it's just to let you know there are options using metronomic chemotherapy for dogs with metastatic disease. Dogs that have measurable metastatic disease, in my opinion, typically, so nodules in the abdomen, in the lungs, typically do not respond well to injectable chemotherapy, like a dog with metastatic osteosarcoma, metastatic anal sac tumor, metastatic mammary tumor. We want to use those injectable chemotherapy after primary tumors have been removed before the cancer has spread. I have found more success with these protocols in patients when their cancer has spread. Once a cancer has spread, we often tell owners one to two to three months, and I've had patients live six to eight months. I've had some live over a year. I've had some live over two years, and I've had some live three and four years. So I'll be honest, I've had some patients where the protocol has not worked. It requires close monitoring, working with a specialist because there are side effects. Um, we have to make sure they're eating, that they're not losing weight, and they're getting pills every day. So one of the things to be aware of when you're going through this protocol is you have to be able to pill your dog. You have to be able to give them diarrhea medications at times. You have to be able to use the just-in-case medication. So we'll put links to vlog number 93 and the video, I think it's number 70 on how to pill a dog. Also, if your dog's not eating to start with, I find that these protocols tend to be harder because we're giving medications that could affect the appetite. So I'm a little less optimistic if we're having a dog that comes in completely not eating. We're going to work really hard with the appetite stimulants like Entice and Serenia to get them eating before we add some of these medications. If the masses are causing a lot of pain and discomfort for the patient, that makes me worried about putting them on this type of protocol. So now I hope you really have a, an understanding of how this chemotherapy protocol is different than traditional chemotherapy. And to me, it's really been a game changer for some of my patients with metastatic cancer. And like I said, to have patients live six months and years, one, two, three, even four years with metastatic cancer has just been phenomenal. And it's really different than how I think about some of the cancers like lymphoma, where we want them to get into a complete remission. If they can have stable disease and a quality of life, to me, you know, that is phenomenal. So I, I hope that this has been helpful, you know, to hear that your pet has metastatic cancer. I know it's crushing, it's heartbreaking. I hope that this is a protocol that will work for your dog and for your cat as well. So please, you know, talk to your veterinarian. Hopefully you can see a specialist. There will be links below with lots of different information about chemotherapy, uh, my chemotherapy information sheets. But come on back for the next video. We'll talk about the different drugs. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you at the next video.